join us on a, such a beautiful sunny day. I'll make this quick so that um, if there's any questions, um, we'll make this a little bit more informal. And so, um, welcome. So we'll do introductions. We'll do an overview of the enrollment steps. And then again, like I mentioned, we'll have time to um, answer any of the questions that you might have. So uh, we have this evening, um, Quentin Overrocker. He's the Director of Admissions Records and Transfer Services. I think he's making a hot pocket, but I'm not sure if he wants to say anything. Okay, uh, just, just, finished, oh. just finished a ham and cheese hot pocket, so I'm good to go. Okay, perfect. Um, and then we have Graceland. Hi everyone, um, the Student Recruitment Specialist here at IVCC. And then myself, Ezra Loveland, I serve as the Assistant Director for Admissions, Records and Transfer Services. Um, so what the heck do we do right now? So depending on where you are in the process, really the big, big step is applying, obviously. Um, you may have already done this, but it's super easy to find it. You'll go to our website and there's that button that says apply. It will take less than five minutes. So do yourself a favor if you haven't done so, do that. Um, I will say, and I'm guessing those of you that have joined us, um, we like to send a lot of emails and text messages, but that's only to keep you on track and just let you know, here's where you're at, here's where we need to go for the next step. So apply, number one. The second big thing is once you apply, you're gonna get that email where it's going to give you a little bit of everything. Um, but you're gonna wanna like somehow flag it or save it or even print it if you'd like. Um, and in that email, you're going to find your student ID number and then your K number. You'll see that we obviously blocked it out because we used a sample, but that is where you would see that information. Um, there's also going to be other information, including some enrollment steps. So like applying for your financial aid, um, placement testing, but again, student ID, and K number. And you're probably thinking, what do you use those for? Well, let's go ahead and check that out um, real quick. I don't expect you to memorize this, but for your K number, for the most part, you use it for WebAdvisor and that is our platform to register for classes. Um, you know, there might be other things where um, the library might ask you to put in your K number. Um, you'll find out more once you become a student. Now, student ID, that's completely different from the K number, and that will allow you also to um, use with WebAdvisor or, um, I'm trying to think, oh, to be able to go ahead and request a transcript from us. So that's important to just know, have with you, um, but you don't necessarily have to memorize it um, right away. I've been working at IVCC for five years and you think I should probably know my student ID, but I don't. So it's okay. I just have that card to be able to check it out. Um, so you probably are also wondering, when do I get a student ID? That is whenever you can make it to campus. Um, if, if you can make it, you know, once classes start or before, that's when you're going to want to come to the um, admissions records um, office and you'll just go ahead and let us know who you are and then we'll go ahead and take your picture. So um, easy as that. All right, the next big step is your counseling appointment. So we have been um, really trying to make sure students, once they apply to apply for their, um, or register for their counseling appointment. And at this time, this is where you get that one-on-one -on -one, um, opportunity to meet with your counselor, talk about what you want to be when you grow up or major, anything of that kind. Um, that's, that's your time to be able to discuss those points. So do yourselves a favor, go to that website. So ivcc.edu backslash counseling. Um, I can also show you how to get there, but do that now. The reason why I say that is you want to go ahead and set up an appointment that's earlier in a sense, just because I feel like there's more of that flexibility with your schedule. So if you're someone that works two part-time jobs and um, you know plan to get involved or whatever it might be, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, you know try to see if you can get an appointment for April, May, or even June. Um, I, I say that just to act, just be ready to, to have those opportunities again. Um, I think when you can set a date, you don't have to think about it. And again, with scheduling and classes and what's available, you'll have more to choose from. 
So again, check that out and I will actually show you where you can find that um, on the website. So um, let me actually go from the home page. So up here, this is like my best friend, admissions and aid. And anytime I'm working with a student, just kind of navigate through there and you'll see counseling and advising. So if you go all the way down, it shows for uh, first year counseling and registration and continue down and it's literally the same steps I'm talking about right now, but here, number two, sign up for your virtual first year counseling appointment. I'll bring you to this page and it's all very basic demographic information and then major and then date requested. Now, don't stress out if you don't know your major. This is just for, in a sense, filler to kind of get an idea of what you're thinking of. So do it. If anything, do it now while I'm talking. I, it's not gonna hurt my feelings because I can't see you, but I would be sad if we were in person and you were doing that. Um, anyway, the next big thing is financial aid. So fafsa.gov, if you haven't done this, please, please, please do this. Um, if you have any questions, we have a fantastic financial aid um, department and they are ready to help. We are open on Tuesdays and Wednesdays till seven. So even if you wanna just sit down with someone and say, I don't even know what a student uh, FAFSA ID is or whatever it might be, contact us. Like we're here to help, that's what we get paid for. So please reach out and let us know how um, we can help. Um, a quick story, I didn't think that if going to IBCC or let alone a community college, you could get financial aid. So do yourself a favor and apply for it. I will say as you're a first year student, there's going to be opportunities for scholarships. The deadline did pass um, February, I think 8th or 9th, um, but that is a requirement to apply for foundation scholarships for the following year. So do this, um, it'll help you. And any questions, feel free to start sending through the chat. The other big thing that's on you and to go ahead and um, work with uh, a high school counselor is to request that final high school transcript. And you're probably wondering why. Um, that's really going to allow us um, and specifically the counselors to see what kind of um, courses you've taken and where you might place. So you're probably wondering about the placement information and we'll get to that. But um, again, there might be opportunities where this one's a unique one. Um, uh, you know, student might have four years of Spanish and they're like, you know, I want someone to review my transcript and maybe I can test into like a Spanish one or two because of my, um, you know, my time at the high school. So again, send your high school transcript. You can send it now, or you can also ask um, to have it sent once you're graduated. And that really helps with the conversation when selecting courses. So with that, placement testing, that kind of leads us into, wait, let me go back. You're probably wondering, where do I send it? Send it to the Office of Admissions, um, ask your um, high school counselor to do so. They'll, they'll, they'll get it everything really figured out for you. So no need to have, I don't know, feel like you have to do a lot of that uh, extra step of like, I don't know, putting in an official envelope and all of that. Have your high school counselor um, send that over. So placement testing, um, aim to score as high as you can, placing you at a higher level, that, that's huge. Um, so we have a placement test for reading um, English and then um, math. And so that will give you, um, and really us a better sense of where you can uh, place in those areas. But Here's, here's, here's the fun part. Um, we also have other options and methods of how you'll get placed. So we can re review a couple of different things and what we call in, in really our area is multiple measures. And so we're looking not only at your high school transcript, we're looking at your PSAT scores, your SAT scores. Um, I probably should say ACT if people choose to do that. Um, GED scores and then um, what's hiding under here? Oh, and there's a placement indicator tool that will go live. I'm not entirely sure if that's, it might be on the assessment center uh, webpage. So let's take a minute and check that out. And first time on the computer here. So need a minute to get out of here. Okay, here we go. So if we go back, actually it might be over here. So on that main, 
um, counseling page that I was showing you, we'll go down and determine assessment um, placement options. So there's a lot of words here, but if you read through it, it'll give you a, a better sense of what your options are. So, um, and this, this is for anyone that, you know, maybe you're in the, the highest level of math, still take this placement exam because then you might be able to test and, and place in the even higher math course that you thought you would be able to go into. Um, so there's a lot of information here. There's a tool that actually, if you, if you fill out all of this information, it will uh, generate kind of um, uh, really an outline of what they suggest or where you might place. And that will be really helpful when you meet with your counselor. Um, and then there's a guide, and this is kind of fun because we like to say, if this, then that, if that, then this. So read through it, try to make sense of it, digest it, and then know that you can call us to make more sense of where that might land you depending on the course. Um, so go through it. I, I'm not going to waste your time to read through it with you. So again, go through um, and, and see all this uh, in the Assessment Center Placement Options webpage. Um, back to it, the next big thing, let me make sure, yeah, placement testing, and then this one, um, is your technology. And I'm going to have Gracelyn um, talk a little bit of what that means and why it's important. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let Gracelyn take it away. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I was answering a question in the chat. Um, I'll get back to you, Chloe. But um, our student technology, I know this looks like a lot of information. Um, we send this out with your admissions packet, but it literally is a step-by-step -step guide as to what exactly you'll need to get started here. Um, and if you follow this, um, as long as you can, it's also available online, but there's a lot of resources online as well. Um, if you ever have any questions about how to navigate, whether it be your Blackboard or your web advisor or any of your online accounts like your email, um, you can contact also our student help desk. Um, their number's on there. Um, it is, if you want to write it down, it's 815-224-0438, but they'll walk you through if you're unlocked on anything or you're just trying to access something. Um, your email accounts give you access to so many different things that we have um, on the internet for you guys, like you at IVCC, the library's website, being able to check out a book and reserve a book um, to renew it, uh, how to access your uh, class schedule, and all that stuff. So it's best um, to have the foundation of getting your student technology all set up before um, you go you go in order to be as successful at you know, doing your first semester. Um, like I said, it looks like a lot, but it will get you off on the right foot. Um, and up next, we're going to talk about registering for classes. So once you um, talk to your counselor or you determine um, on your own which classes you want to take, you can call records and registration. The number is right there. 815-224-0447 and we will walk you through the process of getting enrolled um, and also there's the ability to do that online on WebAdvisor um, and if you're having if you need assistance on WebAdvisor contact the student help desk once again their number is 815-224-0318 um, and so you can register on classes for classes like I said um, over the phone or online um, we're happy to help you so don't be afraid to call us Thank you, Gracelyn. And then um, the final step, this is where you're like, ah, oh, okay, they want my money, which is true, but this will go ahead and secure your places in your classes. So payment is really important to either have those conversations with your family um, because there's options. And we know that not everyone has like so many thousands of dollars to just be able to pay off everything. So there's payment plan options. I think this was a, such a great thing for myself when I was going through this. Um, so you can break it up in, in chunks and um, know that that is being taken care of. Um, and you can pay in person, online, um, via web advisor, or even over the phone. So there's, there's different options. Just know that um, if you do think you wanna do the payment plan, do it early, because again, that will then allow for um, a spread of those payments to be made. 
And just so that you know, for fall semester classes, um, that is due August 4th. And so you might be wondering, what if August 4th, I just don't make that money or I make my payment? Um, you will get dropped. So that's why it's important to either contact the cashier and just let them know that, hey, here's my situation, here's what I plan to do. And typically they can put a hold and work with you. Another very important thing, if you are, um, if you're receiving any kind of scholarship or anything like that, and you don't actually have the money in hand quite yet, call the cashier and let them know. Cause again, that will also allow them to put a hold on your account so you don't get dropped from your classes. And you don't wanna deal with that because that means you're gonna have to try to figure out you can get back into those classes and some of the time students can get back into them and some of the time they just can't. And, and, and I, I don't want you guys to have to deal with that. So that's payment. And then upcoming events. Um, if you can see a, a little bit more of what's going on in the next couple of weeks, months, Virtual Explore IVCC, I'm really excited about this. So um, Tuesday, March 30th, 5.30 to, that's not right, 5.30, we're not gonna make you stay online for that long. But what's really unique about this opportunity and event is that we're going to have um, uh, a dual credit student, uh, current student, alumni, um, and just a variety of different perspectives about their time at IVCC. You're, you're even gonna hear from someone that had to just do their first semester all online as their first, you know, first year. And um, just how they, you know, were able to manage it all, what they were able to take advantage, things that they wish they would have known. And so it's a lot of advice and peer-to-peer and -peer kind of uh, conversation. So we hope that you can make it to that. And then the next big thing is Virtual Parent College 101. That's Tuesday, April 6th. You'll see the times there. Um, that's really if you um, if you or your parent want to attend that together. Um, it's it's a lot about okay. Not only is the college search process kind of overwhelming, but also like if you plan to attend IVCC, what does that mean as far as planning for the transfer process, but also financially and that kind of thing. So really good in-depth conversation on that. And um, we hope that you'll check it out. You'll also see that we have other sessions. Like, so if you're thinking about getting a general ed course out of the way, you have the option to do that over the summer. And that's something I totally wish I would have done, like get speech out of the way. Um, and plus it, I feel like there's not a lot of people that you have to give a speech. And I know that that's one of like the biggest fears for people is doing public speaking. So that's something to think about. Anyway, that's my pitch for summer courses. We are on to questions. So what are what's on your mind? Anything? What are you thinking? Um, we can pull this up and, and kind of check it out. Oh, it looks like Grayson may have gotten this. Um, keep them coming though. If you guys have something that you're like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Or um, really anything that you're just slightly unsure or you're like, can you go back to that one page? I'm happy to talk a little bit more in depth. Um, so here's one. Um, so filled out the FAFSA. Is there something else I need to do about work study program? Or would I ask my IVCC counselor? That's a great question. So um, if you are eligible for work study or you have still have yet to hear back, um, that's something you can always give our financial aid office a call to check the status and see if that all looks good, but you're going to want to contact them either way to get the application for work study. Um, and so it's, I want to say like a two page um, and, and a lot of requesting of documents. Um, you're going to want to have um, a couple of references to list on there. And the biggest thing is sell yourself, tell them what kind of skill set you have because you know, our office is hiring for, for students from time to time, the bookstore, um, financial aid, any really office that you can think of that's on campus is typically hiring one or two student workers. So that's a really great opportunity. Um, and work study is awesome because you get paid to study, but you also do a little bit of that work, office work. And so really great opportunity to get connected with resources. Um, so, um, Let's see, here's another one. Already the FAFSA, does IVCC have direct access to my form or do I have high school send them over? Um, maybe a little bit more clarification. Um, if, so I think I know what you're, you're asking here, but um, when you filled out the FAFSA, there was a, um, a section where it asked you to put a school code. 
And that then notifies the college or university um, that you want us to take a look at your financial information. So if you haven't um, or can't remember, I think you should be able to um, still go back and edit that. And I will pull up the financial aid information so you can see that school code, um, because that's a great question. I know that's something you wouldn't think of, but that um, really helps. So let me pull that up and great questions, you guys. Feel free to continue um, asking anything um, in regards to that. Okay, here we go. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so I went to the financial aid page. Actually, I'm gonna go back to refresh it because I opened every tab here. Um, and if you look here, there is IVCC's federal FAFSA school code and it's 001705. Um, so again, if you can get into your um, FAFSA account and see if that's listed as one of the codes, that's the only way we know that you're interested in us assessing your financial information to see if you're eligible for financial aid, um, whether that be work study or even grants um, or even loans, that's, that's the beauty of it. So check that out if you haven't done that. Let's see if we have anything. Okay, I already have my K number in an IVCC student account from dual credit, beautiful. Um, am I going to get a new K number when I get accepted to IVCC? No, so that's that's the best part. Um, you might be wondering, oh, I'm already in the system. Yes, you are in the system, but we still want you to apply if you were a dual credit student. And that's only because um, some students will take dual credit and then end up going to a different school or whatever the case may be. But by you applying again, that then lets us know that okay, you are interested in IVCC and you plan to start with us as a freshman. So good question. You won't have to worry about those um, numbers attached to your name changing. So yay. Um, anything else that you guys are thinking of or it's on your mind that you're just like, hmm, what is this gonna look like? Um, any, any questions about summer classes and what that might look like or even what the counseling appointment um, will feel like, uh, what I can tell you is, is it's going to be either over the phone or via Zoom. Um, what I would tell a lot of students in, in order to prepare for that is start thinking about areas that interest you. And I know that's super hard right now where, you know, how are you supposed to know what you want to do with the rest of your life at this age? But, um, if you have a couple areas that you're considering thinking, and then also if you do plan to, um, you know, either stay with us for a couple of years and then go out to the workforce, or if you're planning to transfer on, thinking about what those in, uh, transfer colleges you're thinking of. Because if you know that right away, even if it's one or two, it makes that whole counseling appointment a breeze because they're then very intentional, making sure that the courses that you need or want will transfer seamlessly to that institution. So it's important to start thinking about that. And heck, I would say start going to those schools if they have um, the opportunity to visit um, campus tours and stuff. It's it's always, it's actually, it's not a bad idea to be doing that research and, and doing that, you know, where do I feel like this will be my second home? And I kind of like the idea that students get two different like college um, experiences. You know, I feel like, oh, I've got, you know, multiple diplomas now because I attended IVCC and then I transferred to Eastern Illinois and then got my math. So it's fun. I don't know. I'm, I don't know what I feel like I'm doing a commercial now. Okay. Is a deadline for registering for summer classes soon? Um, no. So uh, remind me, Grace, and if you know, is it? Yeah, I have pulled up. April? It is April 2nd. Um, that is Friday. That's when summer registration opens. And then um, the following week, April 8th is when fall opens. So um, it's coming up and we're gonna be, uh, our online schedule is gonna be available in the upcoming weeks. Um, but that's a great question to ask that, um, and it shows that you're um, engaged and ready to um, get ahead and stay ahead by starting in summer and just keep the motivation, keep the momentum coming is a great piece of advice I heard from a student today. She said, she's in school. Um, even though it's been difficult navigating online, 
Um, she's doing it because she just wants to keep going and just um, she knows that if she stops, she might not start up again and it just keeps going. So that's a great way to just um, if you're coming out of um, high school and um, looking to start here in the fall, why not start in the summer? Um, it helps you, it makes your progress, um, it, it just helps you reach your goals sooner. And I will share, um, so if you are a freshman coming in, you're going to want to wait um, to meet with your counselor to talk about summer options. Um, however, if it's past May 17th, and so you can, if you do already have your counseling appointment, um, let us know and we can kind of give you a little bit more information on that. But um, if you are thinking about summer classes, that's the conversation you'll have with your counselor during your um, first year counseling appointment. And so you'll see here, I, I brought back up um, summer A. So we have three different sessions over the summer. So May 24th is when that summer session A starts. And that's about three weeks, which is pretty sweet. But if you're willing to go hard for like three weeks every other day, um, coursework, lectures, and all of that. If you're wanting to kind of take it easy, um, I would say summer session B, and there's even a summer session C, and they're June 7th and June 16th. So that is more of like the 16 week um, layout for those courses. So any questions about that? Uh, we also got a note from um, Quentin. He says summer is actually viewable now. So if you go to Web Advisor, um, you can look at the summer schedule. You just can't um, sign up for classes quite yet. 